Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We will demonstrate the fabrication of the radiographic or x-ray guide first for the single tooth area and for the two tooth area. If this were an actual patient, the first step of preparing for our x-ray guides would be to secure a good impression and model of our patient. What I want to do first is mark the proposed location for our implants. What I want to do always is to view the cast from the buccal or labial and estimate as best I can what the direction and location of the roots of the teeth are that are adjacent to our edentulous area. I typically make a mark in the center of the clinical crown of the tooth and then as best as I can I view down and many times you can see on your cast you will have a slight elevation where the root of the tooth is. So I will make a mark in what I'm estimating will be the center of the root of the tooth and then just connect those two marks with a line. And so what this line is is the long axis of the tooth anterior to the edentula space. Now in an actual patient I will always be verifying the angulation of these roots with a periapical radiograph. The next thing I want to do is make as good an estimation as I can of the exact center of the space. For that purpose I'm going to turn the cast, look down on it from above and make my best estimation of finding the center of that edentula space and we mark this center of the area between the two teeth. Now I want to look again from the buccal or labial aspect and so I've got my center area or my center spot for the edentulous ridge and I want to look at the angulation of the tooth roots of the adjacent teeth and as nearly as I can as I say split the difference. Now when I look at this again from the occlusal aspect I want to get the buccolingual position of the implant as well. So I do not want to locate the implant too far toward the buccal, which would leave me insufficient bone covering the buccal aspect of my implant. What I do now is connect these two areas from center of tooth to center of tooth, but also take a good look to make sure that that X marks the spot, so to speak. That cross isn't too close to the buccal surface of my cast. This marks our proposed location for the implant in the single tooth area. So now that we have the locations for the implants, the next thing we want to determine is the orientation of the implant. And to determine the orientation of the implant, I bring in the surveyor table and to get the drill blank kit there is a green requisition form that is kept at the dispensing desk and you will see on the top part of the requisition form is an area for the drill and drill blank kit get your faculty's initials in this area and you can check out the drill and drill blank kit the kit you will be given comes in a plastic box. On the extreme right hand side is our 2.0 millimeter drill blanks and this is the size we use for our radiographic guides. One of the first things I'll do is just to take the 2 millimeter drill itself from this kit. This drill can be placed in a dental surveyor very much like a dental surveyor tool. So I'm bringing in my cast and as we had done before I talked about we had the location of the implant but what we wanted to do further was to figure the orientation and to do that I simply hold the drill blank down in front of the buckle aspect of the cast and I can see whether or not my drill that's been placed in the surveyor as though it were a surveyor tool lines up on my reference lines. The other thing I do is to turn my cast sideways and see whether or not my drill lays tightly against the buckle aspect 
of my cast. For example, if the tissue here curved in more and had a soft tissue undercut, I would then orient this so that it would follow the soft tissue so I may tilt my cast inward just a little bit. But in this particular case on this side, our burr lines up very nicely at the buccal aspect and it lines up mesiodistally. So what I will now do to prepare the x-ray guide, because I'm going to verify this by taking a radiograph with the 2 millimeter by 10 millimeter blank placed in my triad radiographic guide to verify the fact that the orientation I've picked out will in fact split the difference between the roots very nicely. I am going to take a burr, so I'm just going to take a standard slow speed handpiece with a dental burr and I'm going to make a little dimple in the cast at the crest of the ridge at my proposed implant location. When we've been off camera I have placed pink base plate wax to block out our cast so that in the fabrication of the radiographic guide and x-ray guides we do not chip or abrade our cast. We will proceed to fabricate the radiographic guide for this area. And as I make the x-ray guide, I'm literally just going to take my two millimeter drill in the surveyor and position it right down so that the end of the drill nestles very nicely in that depression that was made for our location for the implant. And for the making of our x-ray guide or our surgical guide, I take an 11 blade, a disposable, straight bladed 11 blade and cut off a piece of the triad material that's about an inch wide or slightly less. We take our cast that's been blocked out, take the triad model release agent, one can also use Vaseline, and I just take a bit of the lubricant and lubricate the cast thoroughly. As a precaution, you can see that I flow a small amount of wax, a very thin skin, on the buccal and labial surfaces of the cast as well. What I will usually do now is fold the triad I have cut off in half, and I just roll it in my hands to make a long cylinder or worm or whatever you want to think of this as, which then I just lay on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth, and this can be foreshortened. I can squeeze it so it gets shorter. And what I do when I first place it on is have it so it just covers the occlusal surfaces of the teeth I want covered. And then the next thing I will do is just take my finger and carefully press vertically down on the triad. And also adapting it fairly nicely on the lingual aspect of this model. Now what I'm going to do is come back in with my surveyor, remembering that in this area, in the center of the crest of the ridge, I have my depression, which indicates where I want my implant placed. So now I will position my two millimeter drill so that the end of it is right in that depression, keeping my surveyor table held in the same place, just gently press from the lingual, I can take a buffalo knife and press down occlusally. And what I'm trying to do is to get my triad to adapt very nicely around the drill blank. At this point, I'm going to take a small additional amount of triad and place over the labial or buccal aspect. Form it into a small sphere, somewhat like a small P, and place it, again, holding my surveyor table press that firmly right against my drill. What I'm going to do now is just take a handheld light curing wand here and what I will typically do is cure this area of triad for 20 seconds from the buckle and 20 seconds from the lingual. And after curing for 20 seconds from the buckle and 20 seconds from the lingual, the triad just in the area of the drill blank has been stiffened and it's quite firm. The rest of the triad is not and for that we're going to place it in the triad curing oven for four minutes. What I want to do now is just loosen the knurled nut 
that keeps my drill in the surveyor and then raise the surveyor free from the drill. Carefully remove the cast from the surveyor table to the triad curing unit, placing it in. We have now cured our radiographic guide. It's now removed from the triad curing oven and we can remove our drill along with our x-ray guide using a needle holder in this case to grasp, twist, and remove. So now we have our x-ray guide that has a hole in it that's exactly two millimeters in diameter. Along with the two millimeter drill in the extreme right hand side of the kit are 10 millimeter long bits of drill blank. And for the sake of the x-ray guide, these 10 millimeter long pieces of drill blank are placed in the hole. So I take the drill blank, place it in the hole, and press it to place. It's usually a very snug fit, and I use the back side of a buffalo knife. And what is done at this point in time is the patient is recalled. And we would take a radiograph with the x-ray guide in place on our patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.